Looking to add some in-app purchases to your app? Well, there's a little bit more to do than just adding a buy button. Hey everyone, this is Brian. And in this video, we're gonna be setting up our purchases in iTunes Connect. Now, if you find this video useful and you want other people to share the love, then by all means, hit that share button and send it out to all your developer friends. We would certainly appreciate it. Okay, in this video, we're gonna be setting up our purchase types. Now, we have four different types we can choose from. We can create consumables, non-consumables, annual subscriptions, and non-renewing subscriptions. To review, consumables are purchases that are limited and once they are gone, the user will not be able to buy any more. In games, you can typically see these employed as currency to buy game items. I've also seen it used for continues and even for number of lives. Non-consumables are purchases that you buy once and you keep forever. For instance, a user may be able to remove ads from an app or a game may provide additional levels. You also have two different kinds of subscriptions. An auto-renewable subscription works just like any regular subscription, like any subscription service. For example, you may have a video streaming app. You can create a subscription for 30 days, and after each 30 days, Apple will automatically charge the user until the user cancels. The non-renewing subscription is a subscription that exists for a limited duration, but the user has to manually renew the subscription or it will be automatically canceled. This could be used to deliver content over a set period time, such as a, seasons, a season pass. In this episode, we'll define a variety of purchases, and one thing we must do for each purchase is give a reference name. That is an internal name that needs to be unique. Apple recommends that you use reverse domain syntax for each item very much like a bundle identifier. You use these reference names to query the product from StoreKit. A common bug is just, the, is just a name for the reference name, thinking that the app's bundle identifier will be appended to it. You must provide the complete name for each purchase, and you must use this exact name when making your query. If you misspell it, your product won't be found, so make sure you have them exact. Now comes the fun part. We'll be creating various different types of in-app purchases. To get started, make sure to log into iTunes Connect and then click the My Apps section here. Next, you want to click on the app you created in the previous episode. In my case, it's Insomnia Owl IAP. I'll click that. Now I want to access my in-app purchases. To do this, I click on the Features tab right next to the App Store right here. And now you'll see that the in-app purchases section is already selected. This is where I add all my in-app purchase information. Right here, you'll notice that I have a plus sign. You can click that, and now we get to create our in-app purchase. The first one we're gonna create is a non-renewing subscription. So click on that and click Create. Now I'll give it a name. This is going to be called Three Months of Random. And for the product ID, it's going to be com.raiseware video.tutorial IAP and three months of random. Remember to keep yours consistent with your own bundle identifier. You'll see that the availability is set to cleared for sale. Make sure that is checked. And now for a price. This is going to be $4.99. I'll scroll on down here and you can see here we have localizations. So for the name, we'll just give this again, three months of random. And for the description, we'll call this three months of random owls. Now I'm just gonna ignore this app store promotion and this review information. The review information requires that you provide a screenshot. Well, it's not actually a requirement, but you'll get a warning if you don't add one. In our case, we're just gonna ignore it. With that done, click the save button. You can see it's saving here. And voila, we have our three months of random and you'll see we got our missing metadata warning like so. Click on the in-app purchases and you can see it's added to a list already. It's a type of non-renewing subscription exactly as we expect. Now I'm gonna make a few consumables. Feel free to follow along with me. I'm gonna choose the plus sign again and this will be a non-consumable and click create.
At this point, we have some of our in-app purchases set up, but we have more to do. And that's going to be the topic of your upcoming challenge. Do you use in-app purchases in your app or are you planning to integrate them? Now, if you already have in-app purchases in place, what sort of tips and tricks would you like to share? I'd certainly like to know and I'm sure other developers would as well. Definitely let us know in the comments. And hey, thanks for watching. Cheers.